Good afternoon, IMSA. At this time, I would like to ask all guests and other attendees uh, to please rise to the pledge and remove all hats. Other than students, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may now be seated. Well, good afternoon. My name is Adam Daki. I'm the class club president for the class of 2022, and I'm a senior from Homer Glen, Illinois. I have the honor of introducing our first speaker, but he really needs no introduction. Under his leadership, Illinois is committed to the development of building a highly trained workforce capable of filling future IT jobs through the strengthening of K-12 curriculum and post-secondary education opportunities. Illinois graduates 24,000 STEM graduates annually, and 40% of these graduates receive advanced degrees. Illinois has attracted $1 billion in private public investments in research centers of excellence focused on Illinois' innovation industries, including the newly created Discovery Partners Institute with 15 Illinois Innovation Network startup hubs around the state. Illinois recognizes that innovation and technology are valuable industry sectors in Illinois that contribute to the state's economy, the delivery of services, the advancement of cybersecurity practices, workforce expansion, and also education and career development. Illinois is the second largest producer of computer science degrees in the nation, accounting for nearly 10% of all computer science degrees awarded in the United States. And the University of Illinois graduates more engineers each year than MIT, Stanford, and Caltech combined. I could go on and on. Please help me give a warm IMSA welcome to Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker. Truly like climbing a mountain to get up here. Great to see all of you. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you to Adam Dockey. Thanks for that kind introduction. And hello to IMSA class of 2022. <laughs> to President Glazer, to Principal Akwaji Anderson, Chairman Aaron Roche, the Board of Trustees, faculty, families, and most importantly, the amazing students of IMSA. I, want to come, I wanted to come here today to congratulate all of you on your graduation and on your many achievements. You make the people of Illinois so proud. The special importance of this day is not lost on me. Many of you began your IMSA journey in the fall of 2019, just months before the COVID-19 pandemic turned our world and our lives upside down. One moment you were enjoying Sunday brunch here in the cafeteria with your friends, and the next, you were in the, your bedroom at home using Zoom to stay connected with your teachers and your peers. With no vaccines and no treatments available at the time, we saw unending transmission of a deadly virus. And it was most important to me and to your teachers and to your school leaders that we keep you safe. Two weeks turned into a month, a month turned into five months. Five months turned into nearly a year and a half off campus. 
persevering through your studies without the usual social experiences and surviving a deadly global pandemic like those who survived the Great Depression and a world war. That experience will always leave a mark on your life. But for what it took from you, for all that it took from you, and also for what it has instilled in you, remember this. You have a sense of resilience in the face of challenges. The ability to see the best and worst of our nation's willingness and ability to overcome a crisis and what your role in it can or should be. Yours is the only generation in modern history to have your early years and your high school experience so dramatically shaped by a worldwide pandemic. It's an experience that is extraordinary, dare I say, unprecedented. But there's been so much more to these last three years than just a health crisis. Many of you may have marched alongside me and millions of other Americans in June of 2020 after George Floyd was horrifically murdered. We witnessed one of the largest social movements for social justice in United States history, largely fueled by young people like you. And the leadership you demonstrated and your peers demonstrated hasn't stopped. In the past two weeks alone, students from coast to coast have organized their own protests demanding urgent action on gun safety. And for many years, your generation has been on the front lines demanding that the rest of us take the climate emergency seriously, as we should. With all of that happening, amid the turbulence of the world, you didn't lose sight of your education as a path to achieving your dreams. You conducted your own academic research through the SIR program, getting published in professional publications and journals read by scientists and entrepreneurs and students from across the globe. You set a school record, participating in 36 innovation competitions through INTO. You collectively completed 58,510 hours of community service. That's the equivalent of nearly 30 full-time employees working a full year. You have proven that you are capable of so much, that you can channel all the challenges and trauma into success and action and achievement. Every single one of you endured a global pandemic and arrived here at your graduation. You showed the kind of strength and resilience that will help to change the world. You are our future scientists, our doctors, our engineers, our entrepreneurs, our educators, our future leaders of the great state of Illinois. Look to your left, look to your right, you have a community of IMSA peers who've experienced this journey with you. In the coming weeks and months, you will move on to your next adventure. But the connections that you've created here will last a lifetime. To date, some of my closest friends are the ones that I made during my high school days. For 40 years, we've leaned on each other during the highs and lows the victories and defeats in our lives. There is nothing more important than your family, your friends, and your community. And as an IMSA graduate, you take with you for the rest of your lives a community of greatness like no other. IMSA, one of the best schools in the nation, has set you up for success and I have every confidence that you will help build the society that lives up to our common ideals of inclusivity and equity and justice. And the state of Illinois will be cheering you on wherever you are, on whatever journey you take. So thank you and congratulations, IMSA class of 2022.
And it's now my great pleasure to introduce one of your fellow classmates in the class of 2022, Oliver Nee, to offer some reflections on graduation day. Oliver. Good afternoon, IMSA. I would like to express my deepest gratitude for allowing me to speak on such an important occasion and for having the hardest speech of following the governor. On a more serious note, have you all listened to the new Kendrick Lamar album? A few of you, like 20, 25%. That's awesome. That's a failing grade. And we're about to fix that. For those of you unfortunate souls who don't know, the album Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers was released just weeks before today on the day of our prom. And as we begin to look at our IMSA days through the rear view mirror, it is no surprise that one song stands out in particular. It's simply titled, Mirror. It's a groovy song laid over what sounds like a beat straight out of a Mario Kart beach course. And of course, it is accompanied by lyrics that sound something like this. The pressure's taking over me, it's beginning to loom. Better if I spare your feelings and tell you the truth. So yeah, a little less sunshine and rainbows. Although you could tell that these are actual lyrics because frankly, it just sounds a lot better than the rest of my speech. But the truth is clear. We have huge decisions to make. The gravity of our futures is weighing upon us, literally. Going from high school to a whole new world in college is strange. Instead of sugarcoating how fun or carefree the future will be, it's time to be honest. Uncertainty is especially terrifying in light of our past three years here. We didn't know how we'd survive academically or emotionally. We didn't know when or if we'd ever come back in person. We didn't know how we live up to Dr. Glazer's sick dance moves. Graduation is scary. So thanks a lot for making me stand up here and talk for five minutes. After that harrowing journey, we now stare long and hard into our own reflections, realizing that the fragile security we finally built for ourselves will soon disappear again. Let's take another look into the mirror. Do yourself a favor and get a mirror that mirror grievance, then point it at me so the reflection can mirror freedom. Kendrick Lamar got bars. Grievance and freedom as mirror images of one another. This sounds impossible, but let's just look at us. Three years of grueling workloads, devastating isolation, and global chaos have strengthened us to bear with so much more. Adapting to a virtual world and back to the physical has brought us new tools as we transition without missing a beat. The year's worth of absence robbed us of IMSA's culture, so we rebuilt our identity in the way we knew best. Even more absences, this time unexcused. Sorry, Stacy. We've always faced uncertainty. Against all odds, we thrived. When we complain about our worries, we need to realize that yes, they are valid. At the same time, they are just some of the perspectives that we could take. Uncertainty begets flexibility. A difficult goodbye creates a fresh start. Our graduation empowers our liberation. Look, I'm also trying out the whole rhyming thing, just bear with me. Renowned philosopher, Kodak Black opens the song up with a phrase that reflects a perspective that we must carry into our graduation. I choose me. We succeeded because we bet on ourselves when we entered this very school, IMSO, not knowing what is to come. We persisted and stuck together through everything and affirmed the notion that we are enough, that we are capable. You could say, we went from key-swallowing hooligans to the creative 
ethical, scientific hooligans that advance the human condition. Thank you, Dr. Letterman. And in this time, we climb out of our darkest places together so that we today can sit here, surrounded by our loved ones, ready to take the next step. And that's what graduation is. A recognition that we, being so talented, ambitious, and beautiful, are ready to take on the challenges of tomorrow. All right, time for one last Kendrick quote, I promise. When will you let me go? I trust you'll find independence. At this point, you've experienced your triumphs, struggles, laughs, tears, everything IMSA has to offer. And there is only one more thing to do. Remember that you are the master of your own destiny and have the power to control your perspective. Remember that the future is uncertain, but it is one that you can wield to your own advantage. And remember that this community will always have your back. It is time to let go of the previous you and to find that freedom in the great beyond. Class of 2022, when you get back home, take one good, hard look into the mirror. Be proud of who's on the other side. Thank you and happy graduation. Hello, graduates, family, and faculty. Today is June 4th, 2022, a day that I, for one, am pleasantly and poignantly surprised to discover has finally arrived. After two years, nine months, and 20 long days, our time at IMSA has finally come to an end. But there's been way too much looking into the future already. You see, that's too scary for me, and Oliver already did it better anyway. So before we walk this stage and saddle the title of IMSA alumni, let's take a second to look to the past. Located on the second shelf on the back wall of the IMSA archives is our school's first ever yearbook, written in the year 1987, back when most of you parents were busy sporting big hair and shoulder pads. The very first page reads, in the beginning, there was an idea. In the beginning, there was a Golomafri, a group of people gathered together to fulfill one purpose, to fulfill Illinois' potential for excellence. But what we were and what we grow towards is beyond even what the founders envision. In those bewitching lines, I believe that the pioneering charter class set out to describe the IMSA experiment, a $28 million running bet to our dear congressional representatives in Springfield that if we select some of the brightest minds throughout the state and provide them with the time and resources to dedicate themselves to knowledge, they can supersede even our wildest expectations. By the time we came around, the IMSA experiment was 33 years in the making. And frankly, we, the class of 2022, made wonderful guinea pigs. As sophomores, we willingly chose to step into this pressure cooker, starry-eyed and naive to the reality of the next three years of our lives, unaware that in the days after that first move-in, we drown and revive ourselves in a tide pool of academic expectations about a million times over. We'd cry after failed exams and seemingly impossible assignments. We question our own sanity because how in our right minds could we ever choose to subject ourselves to the constant crippling torture and against all logic, we made it through. We survived long enough to attend university, be the future innovators, change makers, and pioneers we've worked so hard to become, and finally, finally, pay back the great state of Illinois for the weight of our financial burden. To our dear congressional representatives in Springfield, 
That's the IMSA experiment. But we, the beneficiaries of this institution, know better. We know that the IMSA experiment is defined by community, that our shared experience is nothing without the bonds that tied us together. We learned that we can persevere through adversity by embracing joy, that the mighty roar of each hall during clash, the magic of the next culture show, and the Friday fest of days past would make it all worth it. And to our families, faculty, and representatives in Springfield, the class of 2022 would like to inform you that the IMSA experiment is not defined by the moments where we were beat down, but the moments when we found the strength to put ourselves back together. To the class of... To the class of 2022, the IMSA experiment is the kind of hysterical laughter you and your friends only share when it's 1 a.m. and you're not at all prepared for the big test tomorrow. The IMSA experiment is the limitless potential in every eye day, the smirks you exchange with your wingmates in the hallway, the fight against uniformity. The IMSA experiment is sitting in these chairs in front of me and honoring but leaving behind the naive sophomore that first graced our halls. And graduates, I have a secret to share. The Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy isn't just something that happened to us. No, after two years, nine months, and 20 long days of trials and triumphs, we are the IMSA experiment. We are the investment our representatives choose to bet on every financial year. We are the promise made by scientists all those years ago and the gamble that decides the fate of this game. And as the beneficiaries, we will carry that weight for the rest of our lives. Graduates, after two years, nine months, in 20 long days, the IMSA experiment has finally begun. Thank you. Greetings. My name is Aaron Roach, and I have the honor of serving as the chair of the IMSA Board of Trustees. On behalf of the trustees, I welcome all of you to the commencement of the class of 2022. Today, you will not only graduate from IMSA, but also from the School of Living with COVID. Just after adjusting to living away from home and to the transformation, transformations of IMSA, you returned home for some 18 months and then returned to live at IMSA your senior year. In the face of incredible changes and uncertainty, you adapted coped, and thrived. As an IMSA graduate from the charter class of 1989, I honor your incredible fortitude, your vision during the dark days of COVID to still see your graduation today, and your daily resilience on the three-year path to this stage. The Board of Trustees recognizes the commitment of our IMSA faculty and staff, students and parents, alumni and educational partners, as well as the state of Illinois, and generous funders for believing in you. Graduates, we admire you and your accomplishments. I now have the honor of introducing our commencement speaker, Dr. Marsha Rosner, who has led teams of cancer researchers at the University of Chicago for three decades. As the Charles B. Huggins Professor of the Ben May Department of Cancer Research, Dr. Rosner and her laboratory create new knowledge about the generation of tumor cells at the subcellular level. She has led her lab in using a variety of methods to understand the complex and varied phenomena of cancer. After earning her undergraduate degree in biochemistry at Harvard University, Dr. Rosner moved along the Charles River to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where she achieved her PhD and a postdoctoral fellowship in biochemistry and molecular biology. Dr. Rosner's research publications have advanced understanding of the start and progression of cancers. She has co-authored scores of papers and peer-reviewed publications. Dr. Rosner has won significant support and recognition for her ongoing scientific contributions to humanity and her, for her teaching prowess. Notably, as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, 
the Gerald Wogan Prize Lecture at MIT, the Quantrell Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching at the University of Chicago, a fellow at the Institute of Medicine of Chicago at the University of Chicago, the International Life Sciences Institute Research Foundation Award, a Crane's Notable Woman in Healthcare, the founder and first chair of the University of Chicago Committee on Cancer Biology, among many other significant accomplishments and accolades. For over two decades, Dr. Rosner has served on the IMSA Board of Trustees as a strong visionary voice for IMSA to develop the ecosystem that nurtures scientific thinking and problem solving among all students. With deep grat gratitude for her leadership and research and to the IMSA Board of Trustees, I introduce you to cancer researcher and national science leader, Dr. Marsha Rosner. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's a real honor to speak to you on this occasion. I was actually privileged to know Leon Letterman and his colleagues in physics who are behind the founding of IMSA. And I have been very impressed over the years at how this institution has grown and matured. The journey is still continuing and much remains to be done, as I'm sure you know. However, I think we can all be proud of what IMSA has accomplished to date, including you and your graduation, and its extraordinary potential for the future. What drew me to IMSA? When I observed how my own children were being taught science, and they were at an excellent school, I realized that there was a disconnect between how science is done and how science is taught. Great science asks the question, why is this happening? And is not content with just describing what is happening. I was drawn to IMSA because this goal of understanding the world around us is one of the core principles of this institution. As has already been noted, your time at INSA has been an extraordinary period, not just for you, but for the entire world. Forever after, we will likely be talking about our lives before COVID and after COVID. And unfortunately, COVID is not going away. From the perspective of a scientist, in my case, a cancer biologist, IMSA is a special experience that uniquely fits our present challenges. What lessons can you learn that will serve you as you continue on your lifelong journey of learning? The best way for me to address this question is to give you a feel for how my scientific colleagues and I dealt with the pandemic. In one sense, the pandemic was an amazing challenge. Everyone in the whole world was focused on COVID. But in another sense, it was also an amazing challenge in the sense that what could we do that is unique and actually would make an important contribution? In response, I pivoted from studying cancer, and I organized an interdisciplinary team of scientists, ranging from physicists, to chemists, to biologists, to even clinicians working in the COVID wards. Our goal was to identify drugs that target cells that are infected by the virus. And our focus was on helping the public fight this debilitating disease, and not on who came up with the idea or who gets the credit. It really was truly the most altruistic enterprise in science that I personally have ever seen. In our own small group that grew to 30 scientists from Chicago to Kentucky, we made strides in just a few months 
that normally would take years. And we readily found a drug that prevented replication of SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID. But even more surprising is the nature of the drug. It was cannabidiol, or CBD, from the cannabis plant, not THC, the psychoactive component that gives you a high, but the other one. We were able to show that CBD was effective at blocking the virus from replicating in cultured cells. And we could even show that CBD lowered the incidence of COVID in people who had been taking a special formulation of CBD for epilepsy. This suggests that maybe CBD has a potential to decrease breakthrough infections of COVID, even when you're vaccinated, perhaps its most exciting application. But despite this, we were worried. We were worried that CBD might turn out to be just like chloroquine and ivermectin, overhyped drugs that worked on cells and culture, but actually they never worked in animals or in people. So we had to demonstrate that CBD could be effective against the virus in mice. This is the gold standard for coming up with a drug to treat COVID. And finally, after six tries, we succeeded. And now we're in the middle of conducting a clinical trial to see whether CBD can be effective against COVID. This does not mean that you should run out to your local bakery or dispensary and start taking CBD. What we discovered is that you actually need a special formulation and a particularly high dose of CBD so that enough of the compound gets into your blood and is able to fight the virus. And no, before you get too excited, smoking weed will not help you fight COVID. You might enjoy it for other reasons. But in fact, what we showed was that if you actually combined THC, that psychoactive ingredient, with CBD, it blocked the ability of CBD to fight the virus. So in fact, it might be a bit worse. Looking back, why were we successful? Primarily two reasons. One, serendipity, and the second, persistence. If you see something unexpected, but potentially exciting, you should act on it. And if you don't keep trying, you absolutely will never succeed. With all the misery and deaths that have accompanied this pandemic, I think it's important to look for silver linings during this period. And the story of how scientists around the world came together to suppress this pandemic by vaccines and drugs is one of them. Another is the way that we approached the personal side of the pandemic. Because we understood the issues, we did not panic. And instead, we served to calm our family and friends by answering their questions and giving them our best advice. We didn't know all the answers, as you obviously know. But we understood and kept abreast of all the rapid developments and absorbed the information that was needed to try to make the best informed decision. This is a great privilege that we, as scientists, are privy to. And you, as graduates of IMSA, are part of this same cohort. You have the same privilege. You have learned how to ask how 
and why about the way things work in this light. And you are poised to become important citizens of this world, knowledgeable, caring, and concerned. I'm very proud to have had an association with this amazing institution, and I have great faith in you as you move to the next stages in your lives. Congratulations, class of 2022. Good afternoon. Our journey for the past three years has increased both complexity and the pace of change. Some of the complexities at EMSA included becoming a virtual school overnight in March of 2020, reopening with new rules, those included physical distances, masks, barriers, and weekly COVID tests in 2021. Here we are today, celebrating this graduating class spent the entire year on campus. <laughs> we find ourselves grateful for what we used to take for granted. So, thank you, class of 2022, for your resilience. Thank you to faculty who adapted instruction. Thank you to parents and the EMSA community that offered support to make today a reality. The news is not all about challenges, though. It's also about what worked. This graduating class is a testament to EMSA on our best days. 91 of you named Illinois State were named Illinois State Scholars for Outstanding Academic Achievement. That's a great achievement. Yep. 104 of you presented research at EMSA Locum. Some of the research topics included estimating the number of Earth-sized habitable planets in our galaxy and using neural, neutral networks for option pr pricing. There are many more examples, but the best is yet to come. Now, I would like to speak to the people of the moment, our EMSA graduating class of 2022. Seniors, you have faced complexity at EMSA and have had to pivot quickly to new remote learning technologies and health precautions. As you mature through your, your life, your life journey, you will face complex problems and you will live in a world of rapid change. I want to offer you one important insight from the EMSA experience. Relationships matter. Raise your hand if you have reached out to, to your peers to help to understand a math problem set. Raise your hand. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I challenge you to continue to engage your EMSA network when you walk out of this ceremony. You are not alone. You are part of the legacy of EMSA graduates. EMSA alumni lead from wherever they are. EMSA's challenge and intent is to ignite and nurture ethical scientific minds. Help me finish the last part. That, very good, very good. Thank you so much. That advanced the human condition. And do it from wherever you find yourself. Now, the moment you have been waiting for. Dr. Glazer, on behalf of my faculty colleagues, 
the residential counselors and staff, it is my distinct honor to present to you the class of 2022. They are ready to receive their diplomas and medallions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Akwaji Anderson. It's an honor for me to receive the class of 2022 today. Some of you may remember the time when we rehearsed together so we can perform in Casa de Alma. Listen, I mean, you stated the mission, but if IMSA were ever to expand the mission for what really happens at the academy, for sure it would become to ignite, nurture, creative, ethical, scientific minds and celebrate cultural diversity through show-stopping performances that advance the human condition. Listen, dancing and performing is just a way of life around IMSA. Graduates. Raise your hands if you were in either Diwali, Lunar, Harambe, Casa de Alma, or Clash of the Hall performances. See, I told you it'd be hard to graduate from IMSA without shaking your moves. I think these cultural performances speak to the part of our mission about advancing the human condition. For many, it's about having fun together with friends and building a sense of community. For others, like me, it's more than that. It's about having the courage to try something that looks way too hard. I mean, have you seen the modern dance group around at IMSA? Unbelievable. Their grace and smooth moves look effortless and so natural. Now take a look at me. I'm just an old dude that requires purposeful effort in every step, twist, and turn I take. Alice, one of our graduates, this is where you say, like, go, Alice. <laughs> Alice, one of our graduates, was in charge of the choreography of the Modern Dance Group and invited myself and Dr. Gwaji Anderson to participate. For sure, she would find a spot for us to participate in a way that fit in. She also created an instructional video so we could practice at home. I looked at it and thought, I, I informed Alice it was way too hard, and really uh, way too hard for this awkward, clumsy, slow body that has no rhythm. So I said, please give us something easier, something that you give your parents. Now, no offense to Alice's parents. However, there were some real hip swivels, hops, jumps, magic twirls, I mean, <laughs> you name it, something that really put me to task. In fact, this was my imposter syndrome moment, wondering if I belonged. Do I back out? I really wanted to participate, so I asked Alice if we could do something else, like make something up. She offered that we practice together and that she would help us out. She told us we could take out the swivels and the magic twirls and just move our arms around. Okay, I was willing to try that. So Dr. Akwaji Anderson and I practiced the routine over and over and over and over and over and over again. And still I struggled to understand how we could be invited to do something that was too hard for my body to process. But then I realized something really, really important. It didn't actually matter how I performed. It mattered that I tried something really hard. It mattered that I recognized my limitations and imperfections and I still did it. It mattered that I felt included as part of something that was special for you, the students, the class of 2022. Often I hear from students that their struggles about living up to idealized expectations of others. It may be a career they need to pursue, grades they need to earn, or colleges they need to attend, as if they need to be perfect. Coming to IMSA may set a course to achieve these outcomes. However, it's not because you need to be perfect at all. In fact, we expect you to struggle. We expect you to have setbacks. We expect you to confront your limitations and persevere. For some of us, like myself, it's the courage to dance, 
and for others, it may be solving differential equations or coming up with a breakthrough in research for COVID. Working through your doubt, learning from your mistakes, and persisting to get back up is part of advancing the human condition. That is part of the IMSA experience that will serve you well into the future. One of the best interview prompts I experienced many years ago was, quote, give us an example where you have failed. I, had, I was completely dumbfounded. I had a solid transcript and a list of accomplishments at the time that I, I struggled to find an answer. It was an interview, so I wasn't supposed to bring out my, wasn't I supposed to bring out my most perfect self? My failures were buried, buried in my long-term memory. I couldn't think of anything. I was just too fearful to be vulnerable and retrieve the moments that, ironically, where I learned the most. Since that time, I reconciled failure as a necessary part of innovation. It's a signal of trying something really hard, perhaps something that no one else has tried before, and what you learn from those mistakes is pivotal, so that you know what to do differently next time, or now have a willingness to continue to try really, really hard things. With that mindset, with that mindset, eventually breakthroughs happen. To our graduates, I hope failure was part of your journey at IMSA. I hope you experienced that struggle, that sweat, that uncertainty, and those setbacks. And now, as a result of your hard work, realize how impressive this diploma that you are about to receive because you persisted through those challenges. You earned it, every bit of it. Congratulations, class of 2022. We would like to be recognized as a class and realize that you want to recognize individual students. However, in keeping with the formal nature of this special ceremony, honoring the class of 2022, and in the interest of the dignity of the program, please hold your applause until all members of the class have received their diplomas. Adam Dockey. <laughs> Oliver Nee. Emily Nachiganda. Sabrina Zhang. Oluwadami Lola, Michael Adeshina. Elizabeth Mary Alcala. Edwin Alcantara. Tavesha Ananth. Liam McGuire Archer. Ariella Aslani. Jacob Joseph Baukhausen. Shazad Mansour Bajuala. Balaji Balachandran. Colin Edward Ballantyne. Zoe Catherine Barrages. Blake Matthew Barth. Akash Basavaraju. Shiraz Riaz Baksamusa. Sai Rashida Bodu. Matthew Ryan Bravo. Ethan Conrad Brazelton. Aiden James Brinkman.
Nathan James Brodsky. Peter Capriotti. Nicholas Dean Carter. Sanvi Chelikani. Amanda Chen. Isabel Chen. Isabella Chen. Siu Yun Cho. Natalie Yuan Ni Chung. Sean Coutinho. Amelia Grace Daniels. Sana Davis. Kian Christian Nirazin de Guzman. Gabriel Delgado. Yihan Deng. Willow John Dennison. Neil Vassant Degay. Disha Dereja. Rajuta Derwas. Christo Ekimov. Abigail Lorraine Ernat. Alamiji Mary Fabamibe. Kevin Fan. Madeline Fields Halva. Jonah Robert Fisher. Serena Joy Gasek. Maria Alana Gay. Gabriella George Georgieva. Samantha Gong. Abigail Nicole Gonzalez. Nathaniel Duan Graf. Christian Anthony Gray. Maya Love Grisbaum. Shikar Gupta. Lazeli Gutierrez. Caroline Jade Hall. Gavin Andrew Hartlob. Jillian Rose Heinzman. Angel Hernandez. Axel Hernandez. Sarah Christine Hill. Nadia Victoria Horak. Natalie Ellen Holseberg. Michael Hunding. Hector St. Jude Ibarra. Tamilolu Don Iji Sasson. Matthew Ilumato. Elena 
Esther Anbio M. Jamie Cho M. Caitlin Ann Ingalls. Kaz Isabew. Sean William Jason. Emily Ann Johnson. Hannah Paige Johnson. Morgan Sierra Johnson. Thomas Johnson. James Matthew Johnston. Minso Jung. Avdan Kandikatu. Neati Kapadia. Tanav Karnik. Rohit Kartha. Rohit Karakam. Nathan Alexander Kilmer. Eunice Kim. Samir Kumarvalu. Rachel Renee Cortoba. Belly Kubimana. Preston Lambert. Adrian Lara. Samuel Lee. Alice Lee. Joyce Lee. Julie Lima. Daniel Liu. Jasmine Liu. Brogan Kaylin Long. Annabelle Lily Liu. Nadia Mary Ludwig. Jessica Hannah Lysing. Temi Lope Akin Malayan. <laughs> Seth Austin Mack. <laughs> Aiden Beckett Maddox. Kimberly Magana. Shreya N. Mahesh. Jacob Allen Malone. Ian Sample Mangan. Pranav Manoj. Jesus Mascote. William Kenneth McCarthy. William Andrew McLean. Carrick James McGinty. Joanne S. Menendi.
Hilda Montalvo. Rashmi Mukherjee. Haley Alexandria Manafo. Navina Matharison. Monica Rhea Narciso. <laughs> Liam Brennan Nelson. Alan Ninka Nguyen. Olua Fekemi Olua Tony Ogunleye. Minju O. Oh. Karen Alvera. Kosi Sachi Ogechuku Anwameze. Dean Oquendo. Caesar Ivan Osornio. Aaron Jean Overstreet. Carson Sage Owen. Grayson James Pekorik. Gerardo Mateo Paramo. Abiram Pasapula. Advait Jagar Patel. Pranav Vijay Patel. Inga Ona Pavilonis. Krista Alia Paleo. Lucien Jean Pettit. John Donald Pinto. Ava Puchikinand. Kevin Benjamin Q. Akwesi Ahin Korku. Reese Ramos. Haley J. Ravel. Apoorva K. Reddy. Chris Benjamin Reyes Soto. Jacoby Mackay Richard. Mason Ronald Wrinkle. Adriana Rodriguez. Haley Sakura Rodriguez. Caitlin Grace Rounds. Rashil Samungi. Bargav Ram Sampathgumaran. Kristen Ann S. Sanchez. Damian Aiden Santiago. Nicolette K. Schmidling. Logan Michael Schultz. Rachel Christina Selvaraj.
Eric Charles Shackelford. Manal Shamsi. Dev Kumar Singh. Kaur Grayson Saray. Zoe Adonadi Sloniker. Aiden Barlow Smith. Tyler R. Smith. Elizabeth Oluwayemisi Soyami. Storm Michael Stern. Kavin Sahirtharin. Zachary Lee Swanson Linville. Robert Jacob Shochinsky. James Rupert Belosis Tan. Andy Yilin Tang. Siddharth R. Tawari. Andrea Camille Torres. Matthew David Torres. Rashik Reddy Umareddy. Gabriella Sophia Velasquez. Quinn Anthony Verdine. Leo Manley Volker. Srinitya Sujata Vora. Eileen Vortia. Akil Ved Vaitla. Alexander Michael Wagner. Layla Malika Walton. Gloria Xinye Wang. Emily Wei. Margaret Way. Alexander Van Williams. Philip Yungfeng Yi. Aaron Yu. Kyler Yu. Nathan Yun. Alexander Zhang. Andrew Zhang. Edward Zhang. Michaela Zhang. Kaylee Joe. Robert Zhu.
All right. And now I have a proclamation to make. As the Principal and Chief Academy Officer of the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy, it is my pleasure to make the following proclamation. To all parents and members of the public present, the students before you have completed requirements to graduate from EMSA. They have made met rigorous academic criteria. They have earned respect from our faculty and staff. These students are now young adults prepared and ready to face the academic and career choices available to them as a result of their studies at EMSA. It is my pleasure to present to you EMSA's 34th graduation class the class of 2022.